Hey everyone, Rich from High Level How To here. And today we're gonna to look at building a dynamic pricing table in High Level. Dynamic pricing tables are very popular on websites these days, most commonly used to switch between annual and monthly pricing, but you can use them for other things. And it isn't always easy or obvious to see how you can add those into your website. Today, I'm gonna to show you how you can do that for free. So let's dive in. And as we get started, know that I'm specifically looking at how this can be installed into High Level. If you haven't heard of High Level before, you wanna check it out, there's a link in the description below that's gonna give you a free trial. But the same code will work on any website builder. You're just gonna to need to look and see how you link the items up for your specific website builder. Hopefully you can get some tips along the way but particularly if you are a high level user, then this is for you because we're gonna create this dynamic pricing table in a way that is as easy as possible using code provided. So here is our example and the classic kind of thing is three tiers and a price here. And as we click on the slider here, the three prices change. And then also we see here that the buttons are changing. We can't see that, but those buttons would also be going to a different cart link. And if you click there, they click back again. How do we get this done in high level? Well, first navigate to this Automation Geeks page and you'll see down the bottom here, you've got the HTML, JavaScript and the CSS code. I'm just gonna copy all of this code here to bring across, and don't worry if you've never used high level in this way before. I'm gonna make it real simple so you can see how it works. We're in the website builder, the same would apply to a funnel, obviously. And in this case, I'm gonna just create a new page, but you could be putting it on an existing page. And I'm gonna create something that is blank, but again, you could be using a template or something you have already got. So first of all, I'm gonna put a full width section in and add a row in. And in this case, I'm gonna do a three column row. And then this middle column here, I'm gonna add an element and I'm gonna scroll down to find the custom JavaScript HTML element. Click once on that. And now I've got that element in here. And when that's selected, you'll see in the settings on the left, I can click open code editor. So click that, this box pops up, and here I'm gonna paste in that code that I copied from the HTML box on the Automation Geeks site. We'll look at how to customize this later for now. Let's just get the code in, and we click Save on that. Come back over to here, this time look at the CSS, and again, copy everything out of this box come back over here. This goes in a different box. So here we're gonna to come to the settings button, top left, and we're gonna click on custom CSS, and we're gonna paste that in there. If you've got other things in these boxes, just paste them below that. Make sure not to uh, overwrite anything. Again, we can come back and look at customization there. Click save. Now, if we save this new page here, not too worried about the metadata, and then click preview, what you'll see is we've got a simple toggle. And the toggle works in that it's uh, clicking backwards and forwards, but it's not doing anything else and there aren't any other elements. And that's intentional because what that means is that all of the other elements can be built using the high level builder. So you're not having to worry about using code to modify all these other elements. You can build it graphically using this interface that for those of you who know high level will know and love and find easy to use. So what am I gonna do? I'm probably gonna put a subheading here, something like this, and I'm gonna put in here annual, and then another one over here, and call this monthly. <clears throat> and then what I'm gonna do is justify this one to that side, this one to the other side, and change the width of this column. It doesn't matter what it looks like, right now on this screen, what matters is if I come across to our preview, 
that you'll see we've now got our two words. And again, because we're building in the high level builder, you can change the format of these, do whatever you like with them. So we've got this uh, toggle happening now, but now we need the actual table. So to do that, I'm gonna create another row below it, <clears throat> and I'm gonna go three columns. And in here, I'm gonna build up my table. So I'm probably gonna put a headline element in, and I'm gonna call it something like basic. Gonna put a subheadline in, and this is gonna be my price here. I'm gonna go 2.99. And then often you put a bullet list in of some, some different things and then some sort of a button below that. So that's your basic table and you can change this, add various bits in, all using the high level builder. Now for ease, what I'm gonna do here to keep the formatting consistent is I am just going to duplicate this column and I'm gonna delete out these other two columns here. So now I've got my three you know, levels, basic, you know, maybe this is medium, this is advanced, whatever it wants to be, 299, let's say 499 here and 699. <clears throat> so if we click save on this and come over to have a look at our preview, everything looks good, but obviously our toggle isn't doing anything because so far we haven't told this toggle what it needs to be changing. How we're gonna do that is using what's called CSS Selector. Now this might be new to you, but any item that you click on here, you can discover the CSS Selector by clicking on Advanced, coming to the bottom here, and you'll see it tells us what the CSS Selector is. So I'm on our pricing item here, which is a subheadline in this case. This button here copies that to the clipboard. And now I'm gonna come into here click on to our code item and scroll down. And what you'll see is that I've created the constants for you right in a block here and all together. So all the constants for that first column, package one I'm calling it, are here, then the package two, then package three, and then the code that actually operates comes after that. And I've done that so that if uh, you're trying to edit these items, you're not worried about overwriting a bit of code and getting lost, it's all in the same place. So. You see where it has, says package one CSS. This is where I'm gonna overwrite this value here with what we've just copied to the clipboard. And, and I've left a note of that in the, the notes up here. I'm gonna take rid of the, get rid of the hash symbol at the beginning to leave it like that and click save. And then what I'm gonna need to do is do that for each of them. So now I click on this second one. Of course, if you want to have some sort of a note open, copy them all into there rather than going backwards and forwards, you can do that. Copy that one, come back into the code editor, come back down this time to package two, select everything within those uh, inverted commas there, paste that in, get rid of the hash symbol, click save. Same for the third one then, come across here, copy that CSS selector, come back up to our code block, come down to the third one, paste that in, get rid of the hash symbol there. Okay, so that's our three prices input, but we also have to do our buttons as well. And an important thing to note for those of you who like to see quick results, the code isn't gonna work unless you've done all six. In other words, all of the prices, all of the buttons. So here, we're on our button now, we copy the CSS selector for the button, come back into the code editor for button one, and you'll see that's just the next one down here. So we, we paste that into there, get rid of the hash symbol, save. Same for button two, copy that. As I say, you may want to have some sort of a notepad open so you can not have to keep on opening and closing this box but at least this way you can see exactly what I'm doing to get the hang of it. Copy this CSS selector, open code editor, and come down to our third button. And click save. So a final thing that we need to do in setting this up before we give it a try is to set the links for the buttons. Now you will obviously have your own 
website links that you wanna use. I'm just using the actual source page of this for the moment, and you can see I've got the same ones here. So if you look at these here, you'll see for all of column one, we've got the CSS selector for the price and the button. Those are the two things that need to change. We've got the initial price and the alternative price, the initial link that the button should go to and the alternative, and, and I've got them the same, but they can be different. A key thing that you need to bear in mind is that you need the initial properties to be the same both here in the code, but also in the actual object itself. So that's why I've got the price here at 299, 499, 699. But we also want to go down and set these buttons so that the buttons are going to the same place. And that's how the code is going to work there. You know, we can click open in a new tab if we want. We are just looking at getting the initial state of all of these things done. So if you're someone who likes to see things you know, working halfway through, it's not going to be quite so easy here. You want to make sure that the initial state of all of these items is the same. That's the price and the links here to whatever it is in here. By all means, go with the, the default ones to get it working and then change from there. And then if we come across to preview this now, we should see that as we click on these, those uh, prices are changing and the links will also change. We've obviously got them set the same at the moment. So that is a, a dynamic pricing table for free within high level with the vast majority of the elements created in high levels visual builder to make it really easy to edit, to maintain the code. The key thing is just dropping this custom code here into the middle of uh, a three column thing so you can put some words either side finding the CSS selectors of each of these six items so that that can be then put into the code, making sure that the initial state is set both in the code and in the high level builder to be the same. And from there you can go. So customizations you may want to make, obviously you can change the prices, make sure you change this initial price in both place and the initial link in both place, you can change those links. If you wanted to, you could create more than this. Hopefully the code is written in a way that you could see you'd need to duplicate one of these ones here, duplicate this section, rename them, package three, package four, link to four. So you could create extra columns if you wanted to. Likewise, you could delete them out. But you can see here, you've got them in each of the sections. And if you did want to look at some of the different things here in terms of changing the toggle details. You can do that in the code over here and uh, you can play around with these. Most of this stuff about the radius is just the way of getting a simple rectangle looking like that toggle. So there's not a lot that you can change here, but colors certainly might be something that you want to change. So if you have found this video helpful, love it if you give it a thumbs up, maybe subscribe to find more content. And if you are interested in hearing other things from High Level How To, drop us a comment down below about the videos you would like to see us making.